فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روبا الخير Then there are those who do not fulfill salah but they want to They want to so they'll tell you make dua that Allah makes me strong Make dua that Allah makes me strong. I'm only reading three salah a day, you know, that's excellent. But I used to read two, three is much better. Obviously, we do know that three percentage-wise from 40% to 60%, you know, three out of five, oh, that's a big improvement. If someone had to give you that amount of profit in your business, you'd probably say thank you very much, mashallah. But remember one thing, it's good that you've achieved. Yes, we acknowledge, we pat you on the back. But remember... Do not let shaitan make you think that you're doing too well because he stops you at that point. Hey, I'm doing well, three salah a day. But it's been five years that you're reading three salah a day. Come on. You, this phase must not last more than just a little while. So from three, when are you going to move to four? Come on. Subhanallah. Allah's blessed you. Don't just say make dua, make dua. Dua is only a part of it. A very important part, but only a part. We cannot do away with dua. Definitely, but we cannot only do with dua when Allah has given us the capacity and capability to do something physical about it and we're ignoring that. No. Allah says, what's the point of making dua alone when I gave you the capacity and you just left it and you just kept on saying, just pray for me. It's like the sisters whom, mashallah, they're improving their dress code and so on. Make dua for me. Make dua for me. Yes, we will make dua for you. And mashallah, but is there going to be like a time limit after which inshallah you're going to click and everything's going to come in place? Or, or even upon death, we look at you and say, Sister, I made to ask for you for 20 years. 20 years I made to ask for you, oh, I'll put a scarf on you right now. Don't worry, they'll cover you properly right now. Don't, no, no problem. That's why we've always said, let not the first day that you are covered decently be the day that you were enshrouded after your death. Do it before that. Let not the first day that you are covered decently be the day when you're enshrouded upon your death. That's a powerful statement. My brothers, my sisters, something we can learn from, not only regarding dress code, but anything we want to change. Learn. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance and help. And not only ask Allah, but work towards it. Make an effort. Didn't He give you the ability, the chance? Do you know there are people who've lost their health? They've lost so much. And they've woken up completely. MashaAllah, we're sitting here. We've, Allah's blessed us in so many different ways. Start making improvements in your, to your life. Perhaps the day Allah takes you, He will take you in a condition that He, he is pleased with you. And that's the best death ever. We've spoken about it in the past, asking the question, what is the best death? The best death, what is it? It's not how you've died. It's upon which condition you've died. It's not how exactly your soul was removed from the body. That's up to Allah. You don't have a say in it. But it is whether or not Allah is pleased with you. If He's pleased with you and you were crushed to pieces, I don't want to become too uh, graphic here, but... If he's pleased with you and you had a very bad sort of an ending in terms of the way physically the soul was removed from the body, but Allah's pleased with you, wallahi, you had the best possible way of leaving. That's it. Because where are people going to meet you? In heaven. Allahu Akbar. So this is why the point I'm raising, those who are weak with their salah and they want to read their salah, and they keep on saying, pray for me. Or they're praying for themselves, oh Allah, strengthen me. That's a powerful prayer. Keep on making the prayer. But with it, make an effort and see what happens. Allahu Akbar. May Allah open our doors and make us strong.